Hello, my name is Brian. I run a mobile diagnostic and reprogramming business in the Cleveland, Ohio area. I wanted to take a couple minutes and go over some basic voltage drop testing skills that every technician should know how to do. I've been in the business for 16 and a half years. I've been running my own mobile business for a year and a half now. And what I run into all the time is technicians that uh, don't perform a voltage drop test properly and it leads to the wrong diagnosis, uh, wasted time, wasted parts and money. And uh, I want to show you guys how to do it uh, the right way. There are a lot of uh, resources on YouTube and across the internet available showing you different ways to do it. This is just my short take on the way that I do it. I'd like to first talk about uh, DVOM, which is Digital Volt Ohm Meter. Um, using any meter, whether, no matter what type you use, this is a Fluke 233, it's a good meter, but you don't have to have the most expensive meter or whatnot out there to use. The most important thing that you have to remember is that whenever, whatever's between the leads, your positive and negative leads here, is what the meter is displaying. So if you put it right to a battery, of course, if we can hook it up here, you should have the you will read the difference between the leads. We have negative 12.32 volts. The reason it reads negative is because we have the leads crossed. That's why it reads negative. But there, that's saying that there's a difference in potential between those two leads of 12.33 volts. If we flip them around the other way, like this, you now you see positive 12.33 volts. So one of the most important things to remember always is what you're reading the difference between the leads. And wherever you are in a circuit, that's what you're reading. Over here, I've made a schematic, a very simple schematic, a battery negative that goes to ground, positive, which is our red wire, goes to a fuse. These little things are connectors here, which I drew. And then that goes into a switch. This is a very hokey switch, I understand that. But I'm just trying to make a quick point here. And that switch can turn one of two ways. Off positions middle, one way goes to white, other way it goes to green. It goes down to uh, another connector that turns into black wires, but basically you can see that the green wire goes to number one, the white wire goes to terminal number two, number, terminal number three is a ground, and this is a light bulb, at least it's supposed to be. This is a, more of a, what, uh, how I have it set up here, so you have your negative and your positive. The negative goes to our ground, which is a piece of half inch EMT for temporary purposes or for showing what's going on here. The red's a positive, it goes to our fuse block. This is all under the hood, that's why I wrote that there. So you can imagine this being under the hood and then uh, this whole section here would be under the hood and then this would be inside the passenger compartment. The switch feeds, feed comes from the red and then uh, your high and low beam switch for our headlight. So if you flip, flip it high, got that. Flip it low, we have that, okay? Also the connector is numbered. Um, as the terminals go. What I run into all the time is technicians that for testing a headlamp bulb or a window motor or a blower motor or whatever they have, they will take their electrical meter, their, their voltmeter, and they will unplug, they actually unplug the circuit that they're trying to test and they put their meter in here like this, which is called front probing. I don't recommend it at all, but you will get a reading if you can keep your leads in there. You will get a reading if everything is good, but even if that reading shows good, let me put this meter on side so we can watch. If I flip the switch on, that's for the high, low beams, and that's for the high beams. You can see, that's great, 12.3 volts. Now if we plug it in, the headlight lights. Okay, I'm going to set the uh, rig a problem here, and we'll test it in just a second. Okay, we've got our problem rigged up here. Um, imagine a customer comes in complaint of uh, they have low beams, but there's no high beams. Okay, what I see too many times technicians doing is uh, basically front probing the problem. Um, and that would be, I'm going to show you, this is the way that I do not recommend doing it. They will put the high beam switch to the high beam position like that, leave it there, and then they go outside the vehicle, unplug the connector, okay, 
And what they'll do is figure out, well, the high beam on this schematic is terminal number one, so they will front probe terminal number one. I'll set this down so I can go ahead and get that in there. Okay, we have that front probe. Turn our meter on. Okay, and we're showing 12.27 volts. So, I see too many guys going and saying, well, with 12 volts there, the, the light should be on. But what you got to remember is this circuit is not live. It is disconnected. I'm going to show you what happens here. If I can keep everything together. If I go ahead and back probe terminal number one with the circuit disconnected, okay, we will still see the same 12 volts. Okay, now as we go to plug this circuit in, trying to hold everything in the same place, as we plug it in, it goes down to 0.013 volts, which is not enough to light a light bulb. So the proper way to diagnose this, or to test it, is you want to have, always have your pl circuit plugged in, I start by always having good good ground on a battery at the negative, and then if we probe it like that, this is called pip back probing. We'll see we only have 0 .007 volts. Well, let's for testing purposes just make sure that we do have uh, voltage on the low beams. Well, we have a light to lights. So let's see what the voltage would be on the low beams. That's terminal number two of this connector. As I back probe that, we have 11.96 volts, plenty to light a light bulb. But our problem is, at this point, we know that we have a problem in this circuit for the high beams, which is terminal number one, and this goes to the green wire, so it's in this green wire. So what we can do is if in this green wire, we can find different test points to test. Um, there's a connector here. We can also test at the back of the switch, but somewhere, we're not having our 12 volts because if we put this to high beam, on the high beam, we have no high beam. Okay, but at our fuse, we have 12 volts. So we're testing, testing at our fuse. We can test both sides of that just to prove it. Okay, well, we can go to this connector, which is here on our schematic. Make sure we have our battery voltage, 12 volts, that's good. Okay, we can go to our switch. We have our 12 volts, which is good. And the high beam for terminal number one, it's black and it turns to green. That's the green wire coming out of our switch. And we have our voltage there. Let's turn the switch off and make sure that it goes away. You know, make sure we don't make sure, yeah, we're on the right circuit. So what the problem is, is between this green wire at the back of the switch and between this um, high beam connector here, which in real life on our display is here, we have a voltage drop. That can be a green wire, a circuit that's holding, only holding on by uh, a thread of a, of a strain of wire. I'm just going to open this up and show you what, what we're looking at here. Well, what was actually here is a resistor. I know that's plain dirty and all, but what we can do is test on this side. We have 12 volts there. And we don't we only have 0 0.0 volts there. What happened is this big resistor is dropping the voltage that we should be burning up on our headlight, but it's actually getting used up in here. Um, and if we wanted to, we can actually use I told you that a multimeter measures a difference in between the leads. So here we go. We can put one lead here, and I'm trying to be a you know, uh, contortionist. So we got one lead on one side and one lead on the other side of the resistor and we're showing 12 volts being dropped across that resistor. So what the what we can say is that the resistor is dropping the voltage and for testing purposes if you wanted to if you had your test leads we could actually take a test lead go ahead and pull this out a second. Sorry about getting you guys dizzy. 
But if, if you were on the car and you, you knew that you had a point between the wires that was bad and you knew, knew where a good section was and you didn't know exactly where your bad section was, you could actually take a jumper wire for testing purposes and jump the wires and see if the light lights. And sure enough, the light lights up. That's just one uh, way of showing you how to do a voltage drop test. Um, the voltage drop can be on the ground side uh, of a circuit. It can be on the power side of a circuit. But you always have to remember, always test the circuit live. That means have it powered up and running. If you wanted to do a voltage drop test on the ground side of the circuit, you'd have to put your meter to the battery negative and then trace back on your ground. Which the ground on this, like I said, is a piece of uh, EMT tubing. It's uh, kind of rough, I know, but it gets the point across. So if we actually wanted a voltage drop test our ground um, at the light bulb, we can put the light in there, uh, uh, terminal in there, should I say. The probe goes in there, and then our other leads on the ground. And what we're actually doing is we're seeing 0.1 volts that's one tenth of a volt that's being dropped on the ground side now with that in there if that's basically testing between here and there if we take our leads and continue to move them closer to closer you're going to see that that voltage drop goes further down if we go back on our ground side to say this connector here okay now we're at 0.39 volts if we go to our ground pipe let just hold that there 0.35. As I go work my way along this con conduit, the voltage is going to slowly drop down the further along I go. 0.33. And then we get as we get closer to the battery, 0.31. As we get closer to the battery, the voltage drop is going to come back until we get right at the battery, and it's zero. That's the. Okay. To recap what we went over here, these are some four fundamental rules for voltage drop testing with a DVOM. Um, the first is you got to remember that your meter measures the difference in voltage between the leads. And whenever you're testing a circuit like say the, this uh, green wire from let's say this point to this point, um, on a good wire you should have very low voltage difference between the leads. Wherever the leads are on this particular part of the wire, you should have very low voltage. 0.1 or less. Um, number two is to always test your circuits live. Very important. If you don't test it live, you will get uh, bad test results if you have a corroded wire, a green wire, um, a strain of a wire instead of a whole wire. Number three, don't front probe or disconnect the test. As you saw with this disconnected, we had voltage that would make us think that the light should light fine, but it didn't. Um, the reason is because um, when you don't have a circuit loaded, uh, or all connected up, um, there's a potential voltage throughout the circuit. But as soon as uh, the voltage um, or the circuit's complete and the current starts to flow through uh, that resistor that we had, it will drop voltage across the resistor and cause the light not to light. Uh, number four is always remember your battery negative is the best place uh, for testing, uh, to use as a ground for testing. Um, I have personally been burned um, and wasted way too much time on a car where I thought I had a good ground somewhere else on the vehicle, but it really wasn't a good ground, and it skewed all my test results, uh, which definitely is not good to waste time.